Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. Recently I have bought this. This is a RGB full color LED matrix from Waveshare, which is 64 by 32 pixels with adjustable brightness. I want to use this panel as decoration so it can be mounted at the back so that it can display information or sprites like this. On the Waveshare website, they do have guides on how you can work with this panel using the Arduino Mega, ESP32, Raspberry Pi, or STM32, but no guide for the Raspberry Pi Pico. But I found a Pico tutorial from the YouTuber Mundo Yacara Colombia, which is in Spanish. Link is given in the description. He also has a GitHub repository, which will guide us on how to set up everything. Using this GitHub repository, Let's make a quick tutorial on how you can use this RGB panel with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Besides the Raspberry Pi Pico and LED panel, there's a few other components that we will need. We need a power supply to power the LED panel. This is what I'm going to use, but you can also use a cell phone charger, as long as this supply provided can go up to 12 watts and is 5 volt. We need male to female jumper cables to make all the connections from the panel to the breadboard. Here is the connection diagram, make all the connections shown here from the Raspberry Pi Pico to the RGB panel. The power supply we will connect with a crocodile clips like this. Now before we connect the Raspberry Pi Pico to the computer, let's make sure we have the correct version of CircuitPython. Press and hold the boot cell button and then connect the USB to the Pico and after a few seconds it will show up a storage device as RPI-RP2. Now we can go and download the GitHub repository, link given in the description. Extract a zip file and open a folder labeled 1 and copy and paste the second file which will be circuit Python version 8.2.7. Wait a few seconds then circuit Python will be flashed and the storage device will now be called circuit Python. Go to folder 2 and copy all the files and paste it on a new circuit Python storage and replace all the files. After this the code.py file will run automatically and you will have the following animations on the LED panel. You might want to add different animations or maybe just write something. So let's look at how can you do that. Go to the website giffer.com and let's search SNES Sprite 64x32. And let's find a suitable sprite that will work for our panel. Some sprites might be too big, so you'll have to basically go and test to see what works. Let's use this dancing bird changing color as our sprite. Click on the bird and let's go download the GIF file. Open the pescalapp.com, a website that allows us to create sprites. And let's import our GIF file. We see it is 120 by 120 pixels. So let's resize it to be 64 by 64 pixels. We will need to resize it again to fit our panel. So click on the resize icon and change it to 64 by 32 pixels. This will cut away a section of our image, but it will still look fine. Let's export the GIF file. Click on export and make sure you only have one column and click on sprite sheet file export. This will give us a PNG sprite sheet and we see we have one column and 10 frames. Now go to cloudconvert.com and select the PNG file and export it to BMP file format. In Fony, let's stop the code.py file from running and go back to our circuit Python storage and copy and paste the new BMP file into the BMPS folder. I am going to delete the other files that we can only look at our new animation. Now let's go back to Fony and press run. And now we have the following new animation. To display something static is also very easy. We can just go and make sure we have one frame or we can even draw something ourselves. Let's go back to the Pascal app and resize our canvas to 64 by 32. Then using the tools, let's make a square frame and inside we can write hello. We do the same process again, we export the file to PNG, 
in Cloud Convert, we convert the PNG to a BMP file. And then let's add this new BMP file to the folder. In Fonny, I'm going to make the hello frame longer by overriding the frame duration here in the code. You might want to have different frame rates for certain sprites. Running the code, we get the following. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to make a follow-up video on this where I'm going to make a custom PCB so it will make it easier to connect everything so that I can mount it there at the back. If that is something you want to see, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.